securities and advisory services offered through Royal Alliance Associates, Inc., member FINRA SIPC, and a registered investment advisor. Insurance offered through the Monteverde Group, LLC, not affiliated with Royal Alliance. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of WWVA Radio or iHeartMedia and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risk, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can assure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Now, here's your host, Steve Major. Good morning, everyone. I'm joined, as usual, by uh, Jason Haswell, who is the uh, managing director of the Monteverde Group, located, of course, in the Wagner Building, Main Street, downtown Wheeling. Going to give you a phone number because as we get through the program, if you decide you would like to ask Jason a question, call 1-800-624-1170. 1-800-624-1170. Ready for another one, Jason? Yes, sir. All right. This week, we're going to discuss how to do a household budget and a savings plan. Now, you often hear folks say, boy, I have a budget. Well, no, I guess I don't have a budget. Yeah. And they're not real sure which way they go. I guess, Right off the bat, what should you address when you're considering a budget and or a savings plan? Um, first thing uh, you need to look at is you need to sit down. We When we meet with clients, you know, especially, especially in the first meeting, Generally, we're looking to see, you know, where their expenses are going so we can decide how much they can save on a monthly basis, where it needs to go. But most people think they know their budget, but they don't have it on paper. And what I tell clients is, you know, write everything down that you've spent the last month. Where Where is it gone? Put it in categories. So until you write it down, it's kind of like I think some people say, you know, when you have you don't really have a goal unless you put it on paper, you write it down. It's kind of the same thing with the budget. You know, you want to sit down and look at your bills and write down each individual thing. You know, what's the electric bill? What's the gas bill? Mm -hmm. What's the cable bill? Mm -hmm. That one keeps seems to keep growing on a monthly basis. Yes. So um, and and once you write those down, maybe take a look at, at ancillary expenses that. Maybe you don't realize, you know, are, you know, what do you spend going out to eat on a monthly basis? What are you spending? Um, you stop at Starbucks every morning, maybe and get a coffee or, you know, some people twice a day and, you know, it, little things like that. And what we tell people to do is just sit down and make a list of your expenses for the last 30 days. Take a look at all your bills and then take what your income is and after taxes and put the two side by side. Once you do that, you can see, you know, if you have some excess or some discretionary money that you could put elsewhere. Most people are already part of that bill would be putting money into their 401k or their savings plan at work. So we, we add that in as well. But once you do that, look at the two side by side and see where you come up. Now, the problem is sometimes people come up with, you know, in the negative. In the red, because maybe they're putting some things on a credit card. Maybe there's a you know balance there that each month they're adding to. They're making their minimum payment, but which is not a good thing. Absolutely not, because you know if you look at you know credit card debt and what they're charging you, you look at average rates. Maybe it's twelve, thirteen, fourteen percent, mm-hmm. sometimes higher, unfortunately. And if if you're paying those kinds of rates and you're only paying the minimum payment on a monthly basis, you're never going to pay that mm-hmm. balance off. Plus, it adds to the bill total, um, and it takes away from that discretionary money that you're trying to put away for whether it be retirement or college for your kids or you know whatever that that goal may be that you have. So you have to sit down and write down, you know, I think put on paper what those are, and then after we see that on paper, we can kind of get an idea of where you know you have some of that discretionary money and what the best place for it is. The thing is, if you do that, you can also look down and say, you know what? I can do without this. Yes. Sometimes you go down and you have a list of things that, do I really need this? Yes. And a lot of times I think we don't think about that. No, and, and that's a fantastic point you make because a lot of people don't realize until they total it. Right. What they're spending on just daily, you know, like I said, going to Starbucks, Mm -hmm. driving through sheets, you know, 
different things, little things that they're blowing money on that they may not realize. And they may, once they put it on paper and see what those totals are, they may sit down and go, you know what? I really don't need that. Mm -hmm. I can get that out and, and put that over here and put it into something else. But you're right. Until you see it on paper, I think a lot of people have no idea about those small ancillary daily expenses. And you mentioned like going out to eat. How many people put it on the credit card, but really when it comes at the end of the month say, oh my goodness, I spent X amount of dollars on going out to eat to wherever, right. you know. And if you, you put know. if you put that on the card and then you only pay the minimum payment, right. now you have food expense, you know, or going out to eat right. that's now accruing interest in that account over a period of time. You know that you're you may never pay off, and as it gets larger, it becomes a larger monthly hassle. So now you're taking away from that the the other budgetary items that you have. So it's it's a growing issue. You know, one thing we talk about is is you know credit card debt. You just got to pay them off each month. Don't live above your means. Save money to buy certain things. You know, you can use your credit cards, sure. but just make sure you pay them off. Quickly, you know, maybe not the first month, but in the second, make right. sure you're covering right. that expense and don't run them up to the point that you have those big interest, you know, payments accruing and you may get yourself to a point where you may never be able to pay that debt off. You, you bring an interesting point. Some people do that. They raise them to the limit, so to speak. Maybe in some cases, something drastically happened that caused that. Yes. How do you get out of that? What you have to do, and, and again, a great question, um, you have to sit down and make that budget on paper and see what your discretionary spending, your, mm -hmm. your, what you have left. Right. And if if you do have some money, the first thing we tell people when they come to see us, you know, and they say, hey, what can I, I want to save, I want to put money in a Roth IRA, I want to put money in a 529 mm -hmm. plan. The first thing I say is how much credit card debt do you have? And when they tell me, you know, 5000 10000 I say the first thing we're going to do is set aside that money. And if your minimum payment's 100 bucks a month, we're going to put 500 on it. We're going to pay it down as fast as we can. Once you pay that down or off, then we can set aside money for savings. But we can't beat from a return standpoint. If you're paying 15% in interest on that card, you know, there is no way that you know, with average returns in the market over the last 70 years or in the, you know, between 7 and 8% range, we're in the hole. So you're better served servicing that debt first, putting the extra money you have. Once that is gone, then we set up a savings plan. But the first thing you need to do is set up a plan that is going to pay that debt off. And we can, you know, we'll sit down and we look at the budget. And a lot of times I'll tell clients, we don't need to do anything with us yet. First thing you need to do is stick to the strict budget and add money to the payments on the debt to get it down as fast as possible. And that's not easy. It's well, and you got to stick to it. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You're right. exactly right. You have if you don't stick to it, it just starts building its way back up again. The old thing about don't spend money that you don't have, or don't spend any money before you have it. That's exactly right. I, 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 my, my grandparents used to say yeah. that all the time. Right. Yeah. So I mean, the, the, it seems that you know credit cards have become. And the other the other problem, you know, right now, and you hear this on the on the national news a lot. I mean, student loan debt's a big issue. Kids coming out of college, you know, they can't service their debt. It's a payment that they have, you know, right when they come out, they've deferred it. So that adds in that you want to try and pay that down. So that's another issue. But they also kids get every credit card offer known to mankind and. In college, I mean, they're getting a slip in the mail every week, and they just get a credit card, and they run it up. Well, then they come out of college, and they got credit card debt. They got student loan debt. So it's hard for them. They're, they've dug a hole, and they've never right. been employed. Right. So it makes it even more difficult. And I just read, I think, within the past couple of weeks where students in West Virginia are – is that correct? They are the ones – who default on their student loans more than in any other state we in are the, the country. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. It was on the news the other night. Yeah. Um, yes, and, and yes, we are the number one state for defaulted student loans. So, I mean, it's happening here mm -hmm. in, in our area, naturally. And student loan debt's a huge issue right now. I mean, you see kids coming out $100,000 in debt. I mean, basically, they have a mortgage when they walk out of college. 
So it's hard for them right. to get a real mortgage when you're servicing that plus maybe a credit card debt that you've run up while you're there. So you walk out of college, don't have a job yet, and you're you have six figure debt. You know that's why you've seen you know if you watch the economy, a lot of times you hear them speak about you know with millennials right now they're not purchasing new homes, they're renting. And the reason for that, a big reason, some of them have a lifestyle. We've talked about that on some previous shows. They they want a more uh, lifestyle where they can move around and do things they want so they like to rent. However, a lot of them can't purchase a home because they have too much debt and won't qualify. Mm-hmm. So it creates an issue. It's an economic issue for the entire country of how they're going to service this debt. And the only way you're going to pay that down is what we're talking about. Make a budget. Look at your income and set aside money to pay those things down. And you made a statement earlier, and it's correct. Every credit card company oh. would love to have you on their list. So they they'll would. just keep sending you info and application and what have you. And yep. you know, kids bite on it. Oh, and, 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 I mean, the other thing is they get one, they run it up. They get a second one, they run it up. And a lot of these kids, one of the biggest issues that I see for, for you know this younger generation you know, we teach them in high school, in junior high. You know, we you know they 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 go and do their science and their math right. and their English. There's not a finance course where how to balance your checkbook, what credit card debt means, how to pay debt down, how not to have debt, how mm-hmm. to save for retirement. They come out of school, and yeah, they may have knowledge to do their job, but a lot of them just don't know how to run a basic household finance. They don't understand how debt works. They don't understand how hard it is to pay out of those situations. I think that's something in in high school that they should be teaching these kids. You know, give them a class on how to run your your basic finances, how debt works, how credit cards work, you know, those, those types of things. And a lot of them just don't know. Mom and dad, grandpa and grandma have always been doing those things for them. Yes, and sir. all of a sudden, it's, uh-oh, it's my, the ball's in my court now. Yeah, and, and it's much more complex now sure because is. there are so many different things out there, so many moving parts. So, right. you know, you have different, and, and now with social media and everything, they can target these kids for these mm-hmm. credit cards and personal loans and things like that, it's much easier to get to them right through their Facebook or right through their Instagram or whatever it may right, be. Right. So, yeah, it's a little bit of a different world out Ooh, there. Okay. All right, let me give you the phone number again, 1-800-624-1170, if you'd like to call and ask uh, Jason a question. 1-800-624-1170. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back on Dollars and Cents. Sometimes being great at what you do requires meticulous attention to detail. It's about the nurturing of a mission. It's about getting the job done. At the Monteverdi Group, we work like you do. Our approach to wealth management is in the finer points. The precise execution that can only come from advisors who listen, talk, and plan with your future in mind. The Monteverdi Group. Helping clients grow, manage, and preserve wealth. This report is brought to you by Walgreens. The Exogen Temporal Scanner Thermometer is the top choice of doctors, nurses, and other health professionals nationwide. It can be yours, too. Now at your local club, warehouse, and other fine retailers today. Exogen is changing the way the world takes temperature. News Radio 1170, WWVA. Severe Weather Team 9 forecast. It'll be breezy and unseasonably warm this afternoon with a high of 84 degrees. Breezy this evening. Showers, maybe some thunder developing towards midnight tonight. Showers continue overnight, low of 65. Mainly morning showers Sunday with a high of 75 degrees. Rain returns to the area later Sunday into Sunday night and will continue into Monday morning. I'm Severe Weather Team 9 meteorologist Jeff Hexline. Refreshing your news feed at the top and bottom of the hour and posting opinions the rest of the time. News Radio 1170 WWVA. Welcome back, everyone. Dollars and Cents with Jason Haswell from the Monteverdi Group here on uh, WWBA Radio. If you'd like to make the call, again, I'll give you the number, 1-800-624-1170. We began today by talking about expenses that should be included in a budget. Well, next question. What should you have as an emergency fund? Um, 
we tend to, uh, I guess, err on the side of caution here. We we like each client once we build their budget. We talk to them about what do you have in a liquid investment or something readily accessible, whether it be a savings account, checking, uh, you know, something along money market. Um, if something, if the roof blows off, if the washing machine blows right. up, if the car breaks down. And I, I, I think a wise, you know, just to be safe, I think six months living expenses is, is wise. So once we build the budget, we just, you know, we spoke about, you know, you look and see what you need. You know, you take those numbers of what you need for that budget. Say that budget is, you know, $2,000 a month. We then would say, hey, you need, we want you to have $12,000 then in a liquid investment, you know, money, again, a money right. market of savings. Right that you can readily access if there is an issue. So, and that's, you know, we've kind of gone in steps here. We build the budget. We then, um, we know where we are, how much discretionary spending they have to either invest or save or whatever. Then we look at the emergency fund. If that emergency fund is lacking based on their expenses, we want them to first fill that up so that they have that emergency fund. Then once we get to that goal, the third goal then would be to build a savings plan through a retirement account, a 529 plan, whatever it may be. But we've now covered the basis. We know you're covering your monthly budget. We've probably eliminated some things maybe you didn't want in there to begin with. We've or not, didn't need. Or didn't need. Right. Exactly. That's mm-hmm. a great point. Um, and then we filled the emergency fund to the point where we know if something happens, you have money to fall back on. You're not going to have those worries. Then we can build a discretionary uh, investment budget from from there on out. How much on a monthly basis should one try to stick into a savings account? I mean, you know, if you're saving in your 401k, and we look at this, you know, naturally what you're saving in your 401k is going to make a big difference, and that's pre-tax savings. So you're getting some some benefit by making right. that contribution. Plus, you're probably getting a match of some sort right. through, through your employer. So depending on what they're saving there and what their goals are now, you know, the one thing I talk to people about a lot is they want to save for college for their kids and, you know, how much money let's take, forget, you know, forget the retirement. We're going to put all our money in the college side. And the one thing that I mentioned to them is, you know, you can get a loan for college. You can't get a loan for retirement. So you can't forget about retirement. I mean, mm-hmm. if, if your kids go away to school when you're in your mid forties and then they got four more years, you're paying for that. You know, you can't start saving for retirement when you're 50 years old. Right. So you got to look at both sides, and and you, you got to make sure you're covering all those bases. Um, but it, I think that if you can put away, you know, and a lot of people, I think the average savings rate in this country is something like two percent, if that. Um, if you can put away 10 percent a month on a regular basis and stick to that. Making sure that the other things are in place, the right. budget and the emergency fund, right. I think you could do pretty well. Now, it depends on what pops up and things like that. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are saving, you know, 15, 20 percent in their 401k. They sock away a lot of money. Um, but the average person with a couple of kids, you got stuff going on. You got to be able to pay the bills. So if you can if you can put a budget together where you can save 10 percent of your income. 20% would be, I think, the best. I mean, the, it, it, if you can hit 20%, you're going to be fine. But if you can do 10%, and then as time goes on, some of those expenses for the kids maybe start to go down, you can increase that. I think, you know, that would be, I think you'd be okay. What happens, though, is you you get a guy or a gal who says, you know, I'm listening to what you're saying. I agree to what you're saying. I want to do what you're saying. I don't make enough money what I make is just to get me by with what I need. That's right. And it's tough. It is. I mean, there's no real answer. You know, we can help them plan a little better, help them streamline the budget, give them some suggestions on how to save, how to build. But, you know, the one thing you have to look at is you know, some people aren't living above their means and they still may struggle to get by a bit. And, you know, we can, you know, we try and and look at those things and help them out as much as they can with making that budget and how maybe you can take advantage of certain things. But, 
Yeah, I mean, if it's not there, it's not there. It's not there. Yeah, there, there's not much you can do. And again, that's why we emphasize first and foremost: make sure you're contributing to your plan at work. Because even if you're putting in two percent or, or whatever, you're at least getting maybe a match of two. So that's four. Four. Right. So at least something is is being put away for the for the long term. Okay, you talked about savings. You talked about retirement. You talked about college for the kids. Ooh. What do you think as a wage earner, uh, and let's say a couple, both working, what should be their first priority among those? The, the first thing, and, and, and this goes back, you know, first thing should be, am I meeting my needs budgetarily on a monthly basis? And is my budget streamlined to where I am not wasting money? That should be first. Okay. But from a savings standpoint, you have to balance it out. And and I know you, I mean, we want to make sure we're putting enough money away for college for the kids, but you have to focus on your retirement from day one. Again, you know, the kids can get grants and scholarships and loans. And what I've seen parents do in the past, if if they want to motivate their children, what they'll do is they'll have the kids when they go to college get a student loan because that's now on the child, which right, motivates right. the kid a little more to do better in school. If mom and dad are paying for it, sometimes it's easier to maybe slack off a bit. They know they're going to write the check. If you put that, that, that loan on there and give them a little motivation, say, Hey, this is on you. If you fail out, you still got to, you know, make this loan payment Mm -hmm. later, or this is your money. This is on you. What if you miss a class or, or don't, you know, go out drinking and maybe don't come to class the next day or whatever it may be. That's your that's your debt, but at the end, the parents then pay off the loans once the, once the kid graduates. So it gives them a little motivation. But at the end, the parents say, "We'll take the loans now. You've done well. You've gotten through school. You know, we'll cover it." But you know, so I would say that you with those student or or with the college savings, you want to be doing that from the time the child is born. However you have to take a portion of that savings and put it towards retirement at all times. And because of the 401k, because it's pre-tax, and because there is a match, you can take advantage there. But if you don't save for retirement from the younger ages, it's going to catch up with you. You get to 50, 55, and you're, you, know, you don't have much. The average balance in a 401k today for a person is, when they retire at 65, it's like $35,000. It, it just, you know, you have to have somewhere. Because... Who knows what's going to happen with Social Security right. going forward? Right. So you have, I think, you know, everybody's got their priorities. I think it's wise, and I think we've talked about this on the previous shows. Any strategy in finance is good to be balanced. It's good to look at different facets and make sure you're covering all those bases if to be conservative and to take adv- advantage of what's available to you. So, yeah, I would say you just got to you got to look at all all aspects. Too many times, I think some. In particular, the younger folks live for today and not tomorrow. Yep. And all of a sudden, tomorrow is here. It yep. sneaks up on you, and it's like, oh, boy, where did I go wrong? Well, <laughs> well it, it certainly does. And, and this generation that I'm seeing, and you and I have had this conversation on air before, is the millennials seem to live more for today. They're right. living for the experience. They're not looking. We just talked about housing, how they're not buying right. homes, they're renting. Right. It's just, I mean, if you rent for the long term, it's just like burning money. You build no equity. You know, you're basically giving someone else money to live somewhere. You're not getting anything back other than a residence for that 30-day period. But, you know, you're absolutely right. They're living for the experience today and maybe next month. But what's going to happen 10 years from now, eventually... You're 40 and you're like, you yeah. know, where did it all go? And you've, you, the one thing we can't get back is time. You talked about saving uh, through a 401k, for instance. Mm-hmm. What are some of the other accounts that you would suggest to save through or with or sure. whatever? Um, well, you know, on the retirement side, there's a couple of different areas, but on the retirement side, naturally your 401k uh, or your 403b or whatever you may have through work. Right. Um, an IRA, a traditional IRA, a Roth IRA are both great options as well. Um, for college, uh, 
you can look at a couple of different plans. There's a 529 plan, which is a college savings plan. Every state has one. Every state has a vendor that is the sponsor of that plan. Hartford is the sponsor for the state of West Virginia. But there, you can use any one you want. You get If you use the in-state plan, you get a state tax deduction for any contributions. That money then grows tax-free um, over the years till the child goes to school. When you withdraw it, as long as it, for, it is for school expense, right. you pay no taxes on it. So 529 plans are great for that. There are also accounts called either uniform transfer to minor accounts or uniform gift to minor accounts. And what those are, they're, they're accounts where you have a custodian, meaning the mother or the father or the grandparents, whoever it may be. Um, the account is in the child's social. So you have to have a minor cannot own that account, has to have a custodian mm-hmm. until they reach age of majority. In whatever state that may be, sometimes it's 21, sometimes it's 18, sometimes it's 25. Um, but that account then is under the child social, so it's taxed under the child's bracket, which in a lot of times they don't have a bracket because they're not paying taxes. Right. The other benefit of this account is it's a little more flexible. 529 has to be used for school. If not, you're going to pay taxes and a penalty. With a uniform gift to minors, uniform transfer to minor, it can be used for anything. It can be used to purchase a car, a computer, Whatever. So if the child goes to school and they get a scholarship and that money's there, you can then take that money to use for ancillary expenses while they're in school. So, and it's not taxed at the parent's bracket, it's taxed at the child's bracket. So it's, it's, it's a little more flexible than, than a 529 may be. All right. Okay. Again, the uh, program is called Dollars and Cents. We're on the air every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. The Monte Verde Group is located in the uh, Wagner Building, uh, 2001 Main Street, Suite 402 here in Wheeling. Uh, Their telephone number is 304-905-0641. And Jason or anyone there would be more than happy to speak with you. Be sure to give them a call and be sure to join us again next Saturday for another edition of Dollars and Cents. I'd love to say go Mountaineers, but boy, I'm worried today. It's going to be a tough <laughs> it's one. It's going to be a tough one. We got a pool for our boys, so yeah. let's go Mountaineers. All right. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>